All right, let's take a closer look now at Trump's trade agenda with Carl Voigt. He's a professor of clinical management and organization at USC's Marshall School of Business. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Rochelle. Now, the world is getting used to a very different negotiating style with the Trump administration. So how are, the Trump, how are Trump's trade policies affecting the global dynamics? It's, it's hard to say because a lot of them haven't had their long-term effects yet. Clearly, what we know is that people are holding back, as we just heard. Business is very, at one level, business is very bullish at what's happening with global opportunities. Yet they are dealing with levels of uncertainty which are making them hold back on their, on their investments. So we're having a, we're having a, a sort of a, a dual thing going on in the world right now. And so in terms of these renegotiations or cancellations of deals like NAFTA, the TPP, as well as the free trade deal with the Republic of Korea, do you think this is all going to be worth it for the U.S. in the long run? It would seem in the short run, although that's even doubtful. Clearly, I would believe, my opinion is that in the long run, it will not be. What economic evidence tells us that no economy in modern times has achieved any sustainable level of economic growth without openness to trade of goods and services, the free movement of capital, the free movement of people, and ideas. Let me put it this way. You know, it's been suggested that the way that the U.S. is approaching its negotiations is very much like the school bully who says, hey, we're all better off if we share lunch. If the U.S. enters its negotiations with the premise American first, how many economies are going to be willing to sit down with the U.S. and negotiate free trade agreements? And we've certainly seen some countries bristle at his negotiation tactics. And we know that President Trump does put a lot of focus when it comes to trade deficits in determining the overall trade picture with a country. But does that tell the whole story? Not really. One of the things that's being, being left out of this conversation is what's happening to currencies. When economies have persistent trade imbalances, currencies are supposed to adjust. The problem with the U.S. is that there are lots of forces that hold the value of the dollar higher versus other currencies around the world. This puts the U.S. in a difficult situation. And given Trump's view on curbing globalization, putting America first, while other nations are really embracing globalization, how important do you think Trump's upcoming speech at the World Economic Forum will be? <laughs> well, I'm hoping that he has a fundamentally different speech than what he prepared for the, the speech that he gave to the APEC CEO summit in Da Nang in November. That speech began, began very, very powerfully where he praised the benefits of multilateral behavior and all of the gains that APEC has seen by, by economies working together. But when he turned the conversation suggesting that economies would be better off adopting a uh, or following their version of American First, the story fell flat. Davos and the World Economic Forum is about using multilateral approaches to solving some of the world's wicked problems, collective leadership, collective action. I doubt if he, if he attends Davos with the American First agenda that this will, that he will find an audience willing to listen to him. Now, U.S. businesses do seem to have some, some sense of optimism, at least in the short term, but what are they thinking long-term strategy-wise when it comes to how this could impact them in the long run? Well, there's a, the U.S. is in a very unique position. The U.S. is the largest free trade zone in the world. So for a, for a large part of it, they can trade among themselves and, and ignore the rest of the world. However, they're not better off in the long term by doing that. Um, when you think about it, only 1% of U.S. companies truly engage in international trade. But if you compare that with other small economies, take Peru, Chile, New Zealand, Hong Kong, Singapore, where huge, huge proportions of their companies have to trade in order to, to, order to survive and to generate the levels of prosperity needed in their economies. And Carl, in terms of what we should be looking for ahead then, which U.S. trade relationships should we really be keeping an eye on this year? Well, I think the one that's most important for the U.S. is what happens with NAFTA, because NAFTA has, if NAFTA doesn't go ahead, there are going to be potentially serious consequences. Mexico has an election, and Lopez Obrador and his socialist agenda is gaining momentum in Mexico. That could potentially lead to, if, if, if the Mexican economy declines, that could potentially lead to more illegal immigrants attempting to enter the U.S. market. So clearly, 
in, in, in its immediate hemisphere, making sure that NAFTA works. Now, NAFTA needs updating, but it certainly doesn't need to be blown up. The costs of it on all three economies will be quite severe. And sadly, they will be borne by the people less able to cope with that. That is the lower skilled, the poorer segments of society. All right, well, thank you so much for your insights. Carl Voigt there from the University of Southern California's Marshall School of Business.